ribcage. It is conch, a flowering artichoke, a cochlea that hears only pulse. It speaks a seaborne dialect. It speaks of gases compressing, of stars seeding like sunflowers, of the origin of salt. It speaks of the trails of ancestors dragging themselves from the surf, a shedding of fins, scales, monocular vision. The question turns again and hooks in deep. As he wanders the cathedral gardens of Pisa, he sees it in everything, the tower is straining for it. He feels its pressure when he inhales, a bruise, a colour breathing into life, the small ache of coming back to himself while spinning further away. In 2010, 33 Chilean miners were trapped for 69 days, as we all know. There was something fascinating to me about the idea of all these men being stuck so far down under the surface of the earth with no, no natural light, no contact with loved ones. That just kind of intrigued, that, that just piqued my imagination. And so for a long time, I, I was thinking, I want to write about this, but I, I couldn't quite find a way in. And then when I read that they had been rescued, it just kind of, I just wrote, I don't know why that was the, <laughs> that was the trigger. I was able to kind of get something down on paper at that point. So this one is called Palomas. He ekes words from the colour of the soil, from the reek of 60 days of piss, shit, sweat, from his knowledge of each man's breath, the tension at the earth's heart. He writes his letters by the alchemy of truck batteries, tucks them gently as eggs into the abdomens of white palomas, news to hatch in his family's hands. He tells how he's forgotten blue, the wink of El Salar de la Mara, the muscled flinch of swordfish, a lone star fading. How he knows morning only from his wristwatch, from the sudden stringed fluorescence at 6 a.m., from his daily ration of half a spoon of tuna, one biscuit, a mouthful of milk. He holds his notebook upside down, lets the sheets fall open like wings. A pair for every man down here. He must leave no page empty. I cannot sketch these walls in colour, paint reflections into household things, transform your pale fingers into exotic dancers across the stage of the breakfast table. I cannot cut holes in your silences, turn them into star-shaped flakes, like paper doily decorations, line your windows with them, hang them in the naked trees. I cannot sew beads into the sky, embroider a moon from silver threads to turn your view into something more than simply winter. I cannot pull bright silks from my sleeve. I have only this threadbare jacket, its pockets filled with words, all of them white rabbits, all of them hopping invisibly into the snow. poems about tea, <laughs> uh, one of which went into this book here and so Alina asked me if I would very, if I would read one because I'm obviously reading and I sat on the tape. <laughs> so um, this one is called The First Cup and I'm sure most of you can, I hope perhaps most of you can relate to this feeling. <clears throat> Stiff and woolly-headed, I roll from bed. Already it infuses everything. I shower under kettle-hot water, towel myself with sashy thin cotton. You serve me tea and orange juice, but the tea... Sorry. You serve me toast and orange juice, but the tea I make myself. Tapping out the pinched green balls, pouring boiling water to the brim, then watching as they slowly bloom, uncurl, their edges overlapping, 
one pale leaf stalk nudging another's unclenched fist as it reaches up for air. It's an orgy of green. <laughs> Smoky moss weed green loosened to decadence, seeping chlorophyll. A bubble feels its way along a leaf vein. Steam plumes in the kitchen's cool breath. I wait until the colour is almost sepia, till morning's angles are bowed in reverence. Minutes evaporate, edging my cup in beads of precipitation. The first sip is pure light, white, composed of every spectrum hue. Chinese women harvesting fields in vivid hanfu with baskets on their backs. Women strong as honey against the copper sun. Their faces like lanterns strung across the dawn. They are everyone and everything I meet. But I see them only when the weather's right. When the storms of my heart and the light rainfall of my head fall silent and the wind sock of time hangs absolutely still, as if a giant foot had eased itself free of it after a steep climb, and laying down for a moment in the soft long grass. Mm -hmm.